Betty by the Irish-born artist Dara, who is based in the UK and is influenced by Nine Inch Nails, amongst others. He's at kushadeep.co.uk and kushadeep is spelled with a K, K-U-S-H-A. DWP, kushadeep.co.uk, and on social media. And it is. Welcome to Celtic Radio, Dara. Hello, Dara. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much for having me, Bill. It's, a, it's an absolute honour and a pleasure. And thank you very much for taking time out from your schedule to chat to us. So, first question What does it mean to be a Celt to you? Um, I just, it's, um, it's an, obviously it's an identity, but it's a feeling as well. I think it's just a feeling of kind of all things magical and lyrical and, you know, and, uh, and musical. Um, and it's, yeah, it is just, um, it's, it's a, it's a feeling that you're connected to a, to a really amazing, um, uh, vibration, if you like, um, and peoples. Of, of Ireland and Wales and Scotland and and Brittany and and it is just there's just a very magical vibration about the Celts that I feel quite proud about being connected to cultural thing for you then uh culturally um again you just you go to sort of Celtic art go all the way back to the Celtic kind of art art the uh you know the 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 weaves the kind of um the music the bards and then sort of you know you know fast forward to sort of you know you know great irish writers like james joyce and um brendan Behan and all those kind of those kind of characters and um it's just yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a legacy isn't it of kind of artists um that have created some amazing amazing kind of magical um outpourings if you like how is your music evolving now since your new kind of normal album? Um, I think it's you know it's 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 been evolving really ever since I started kind of creating back when I was like sixteen, uh, getting into my first bands uh, at school. So I, it's a constant ongoing. I think since new kind of normal, um, I'm moving around always, just looking at different genres that I can kind of mix and go between, and just to create something kind of that I haven't heard before. So you know it's um it's it's kind of always evolving um new kind of normal mixed ed edm and sort of rock and roll together um and we created this vibe called rock step which has done really really well i mean you'll, you'll hear that in sort of you know tracks like rock steady and night stepper on that on that album and then i you know and then i'm and then i sort of created this uh, another vibe called sort of gothic soul which was you know you'll hear in lights for instance which is like this gothic vibe with a very soulful kind of delivery um and now i'm just yeah i'm moving on to sort of more ambient kind of spatial you know with the track i'm working on at the moment which is going to go towards the new album although there's two albums out i've already put two albums out this year already um of comps of stuff that i had out before but the the new album that i'm working on at the moment is i'm really looking for that ambient space and you know not not clogged up too much it's going to have a little bit more places where you can you can sort of uh drop into as as it were mm -hmm. and uh you're saying about moving around you're leaving england aren't you why is that <laughs> um we're leaving england we we um we're looking at moving to to wales um to because it's again it's coming back to the to the roots of the the celtic vibration and I've, i i you know when i when i come to wales i just really feel it i really feel that energy and it's you know when you ask me that opening question it's very hard to put that into words it's really it is a feeling and if you if you feel it you know it and and i feel it when i come when i come it's it, you've got to got to drive across the border you know from shrewsbury into wales and you you're instantly this transported into a very magical um environment that you know is is you don't you don't see and feel that in england it's very it's very saxon in england and flat do you know what i mean <laughs> i think that pretty much says it all doesn't it Sa saxon and flat oh boy um, <laughs> sorry that... england i do love you but yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> um we were chatting about this uh, before uh, actually came on air uh, we were talking about football and rugby and things like that. Now you say that uh, football means nothing to you now. Why is that? Um, I you know I just feel sort of you know the Premier League personally doesn't really have the 
it doesn't feel honest anymore to me. You know, I mean, I, I was, I was, I thought, you know, particularly sport was a thing of the people, um, and and I don't think that sort of like when you when you grew up and and sort of Arsenal was my side. It was an Irish side, you know, Kilburn kind of North London kind of thing. Now that does, it doesn't feel like that anymore. It feels like it's been distorted and it's moved away from its original roots of reflecting what the community is about. Whereas I feel that if you drop down, you know, a league or two, you know, um, I've got a friend who, uh, um, a Liverpudlian lovely lady called Leslie Ben, who actually works for Vintage FM uh, in Liverpool, and uh, you know she's. She's all about kind of taking me to to see Liverpool, but also, you know, I'm more interested in going to see Tranmere, for instance, or Wrexham, or <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I just think there's more honesty kind of going on in in that in that area, and I think you know, coming back to when that changes, uh, when that changed for me, it would have been sort of like 2007, 2008, when I saw there was a t- there was a player that had signed for Arsenal and done quite well for the Gunners, and uh, and then got sold to Tottenham and. You know, he scored for Tottenham, I think, in in the sort of opening game, and and started kissing the top, the, the the Spurs badge, and I just thought, you know what, that's really where it's at now. It's not really about loyalty to the to the club anymore. So it just, yeah, it's changed. And I think that the outrageous amounts of money that those guys get paid as well just doesn't really reflect in that ninety minutes of value for money, personally. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving on to uh, uh, the books. Now you've already written two books, haven't you? I have. Yeah, I understand you're also planning a follow-up. Tell us about that. Uh, well, the two books, uh, Road Tales and The Night That Jimmy Died, have been out since 2016 to 17. Um, and one was about meeting amazing people on the road, Road Tales, uh, who all had incredible life-changing stories from Aboriginal um, evangelicals to Guatemalan kind of freedom fighters. Um, and the night that Jimmy died was was inspired by a girl that I I knew who was born on the same night as uh, in the same hospital as when Jimi Hendrix died, and I just thought it'd be an interesting idea if their souls kind of crossed over, um, and she had, she ends up being able to um, channel the spirit of Jimi Hendrix and ends up changing the world through using frequencies uh, to change people's DNA structures and has a has a mad epic. Uh, moment in America but yeah so that's really quite that's the two books and then I'm, I'm just I'm working on quite a few different things at the moment so I've got a couple of you know I, I've got a load of ideas in the kind of in the uh, in the fire as it were and I'm just you know hedging which one I'm going to go with so um, I'm not too certain whether you know I can I can reveal exactly what what which one it's going to be but there's a few ideas in the in the in the uh, in the frame as it were I have been asked by a television uh, station as well based in Birmingham XBTV to start making documentaries for them so that's another thing that I'm sort of like putting some time and effort into uh, um and yeah so they they saw a documentary I did on the Brighton music scene uh, all the venues that used to house kind of all the classic kind of rock and roll bands from the Who to the Beatles and you know Roy Orbiston and I was going around all the old venues that are sadly no longer there and they they picked up on that and said would you be interested in doing some more stuff on you know on the mus- on musical kind of heritage and I said yeah sure so I'm on that you know I'm looking at uh, I'm working with somebody that's just written a book on the smugglers believe it or not of the south coast and I'm going to be looking at sort of some of the shanties that they were singing at the time and uh, and a story about this notorious uh, smuggler gang from Hastings and Rye. So we're going to be looking at a lot of uh, that what happened with, with what they got up to and also just the music that was around at the time because I think it's... Um, you know these things aren't really explored that well of what you know we all we all know kind of from the sort of you know the 1920s to to now what people were into but i think you know going back previous to sort of you know the sort of 19th century i think it'd be interesting sort of you know to to find out what what sort of music they were listening to so i mean we kind of got an idea but it'd be it, you know we want to go into a little bit of depth with it so that's in the process of being written as we speak right well believe it or not the clock has beaten us dara okay uh, we're going to play out now with a track which is called Rise Like the Sun. Uh, just tell us very briefly a little bit about that. Uh, written really as a antidote to the whole period of time that we've just uh, lived through. And it's really just about okay. being positive and, and sort of rising every day like the sun does. All right. Dara, thank you very, very much. Absolute pleasure. Um, and thanks to all the listeners in Wales. And I'm looking forward to making you, know, you guys my neighbours very shortly.